Most stories in the Borderlands start bloody. They end bloody too. Sometimes, all it takes to change the galaxy is a trio of losers trying to get through a bad day. We are in the middle of a TDR invasion. Leave immediately! This area is now under TDR jurisdiction! They think there was a vault key being kept on the station. If we can find whatever's in that vault before TDR does, we can change our lives! Like, really bad. Tidio has many guns. Talking guns. Guns with legs. I'm gonna blast you so freaking bad! Yeah! Shut up, Richard! <laughs> I always wanted to change the universe for the better, and now we actually can! But more importantly, we'll be drowning in gas. Are you people like this? <laughs> if you happen to see any corpses along the way, uh, don't worry about them. They're just, uh, yeah, don't worry about them. Oh, hello, everybody. Okay. Hi everybody, sorry about that. Welcome to this video, and this video is me talking about the recent announcement of the new Tales from the Borderlands, and apologies for the clicks if you hear them. Um, I'm far from saying I am excited for this game. I am, if anything, scared for this game. Um, I am a gigantic Telltale fan. If you've been on my channel for long enough, you know that I love Telltale games. I've played them a lot. Uh, not all on the channel, and part of that reason is because I really, really, when I play them, I want them to mean something. I want them to be rememberable series is on my channel which is hard when you're a gaming channel and you know it's it's kind of hard but um i'm here to talk about the positives and the negatives coming from this so it, first we need some backstory if you guys do not know telltale games shut down i think it was in 2019 I don't know when they shut down. I think it was 2019. I'm going to say 2019. And then when that shutdown happened, a bunch of things happened. And what I mean by that is property rights either got completely canned, got sent back to the holding company, got sent back to the holding company and canned, or it was, like, just thrown into the waste logs of history, I guess is the best way to describe it. So we have several different categories under that. The first category is the fell back to the developers, well, or, or games, I guess the first category is the games that just kind of, properties just went away. Uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Batman, Batman Enemy Within, um, Back to the Future, the game, Sam and Max, those games, and all the other games that Telltale owned that were not directly related to another company. Um, they worked with DC for those, so The Wolf Among Us, that's another one that just kind of fell off the face of the earth for a while. Uh, it was for probably half of a year, I'd say. Um, and then you have the second category, which is the ones that fell back to the developers, um, and got republished, which are the Walking Dead games. Those basically never went down. As soon as Telltale shut down, those games went back to Skybound, uh, which Robert Cook 
Kurtman, I believe, who made the comics, owns that company. They immediately put them back on sale. Um, and then they said that they would be finishing the rest of season four because there's there are two episodes into season four and Telltale declared bankruptcy, basically. So that happened. And then Skybound finished the last two episodes of uh, the final season of The Walking Dead and published that. And so far, The Walking Dead series by Telltale has been finished and at this point has no new news. They continued Clementine's story in a comic book form, which I dislike because that's you, you want to keep the fans happy and you want to make more money and that's what they're doing. But that's not what I fell in love with. I mean, I fell in love with Clementine. I fell in love with the story. But the gameplay is what I really like there, too. And the final season had very good gameplay and very good storytelling, very good writing, and all of that. The next category are the games that fell back to developers and were shut down. The only two I can really think of under this category is um, Minecraft Story Mode. Mojang regained the rights, and they immediately just stopped selling those games. So in order to find those games nowadays, you have to have either already owned them, find a physical copy, or you have to um you have to get a code from a website like G2A. Unfortunately, that's about as good as you're going to get when it comes to those games. Um and then some of them uh, got picked up but by what are called the new Telltale. Some of them are formal Telltale employees who've worked on games, and they've changed the way that they are going to go about games in the future. Telltale had some big problems. One of them mainly was how they did their their running of everything. What they would do is they would uh, come up with the idea of the first episode, and then they'd create that while writing the second episode. And then when they were writing the second episode, they'd have to cut things because of time restraints. I mean, there was this one time in 2019, I think, or 2018, where they released three episodes of three different games within one a one-month time span. And that was Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't remember what episode. Maybe episode three. Um, Minecraft Story Mode. It was one of those. Uh, season two, one of those episodes. And The uh, Walking Dead Season 3. They had an episode out of each one of those games released in the exact same month. Probably, I'd say, beginning, middle, and end of that month. And as much as I love Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy, and though I think they're the one that kind of took the hit was The Walking Dead Season 3. It really suffered on the game's end a lot of the time when they made stuff like that. Um, and eventually it caught up to them. They shut down because of that. And the new Telltale, what they are doing is they are, um, they have come back. They have actually started, uh, regaining property rights, including, but not limited to, uh, the Batman games, Batman, uh, the enemy within and Batman, the Telltale series, which those have since been given a shadows mode or Shadows Edition, where the gameplay is black and white. It changes it slightly, but it's honestly pretty cool. It's not completely black and white. There's some color added in throughout, like, the blood, running down people, glasses, um, your tech color, stuff like that. Pretty, pretty cool. They also gained the rights to The Wolf Among Us, which those are the only ones that a lot of people really know uh, from the Telltale backlog they are currently working on the wolf among us 2 and the expanse of telltale series now the wolf among us 2 uh what they're doing and what's different from theirs and, and trust me this will wrap back around to tales from the borderlands in a minute what they're doing is they've they have written the entire story from first episode to last and they are working on 90 percent of the game and what they are going to do is instead of it being a two to three month span between games, it'll be two week span between ga- uh, between episodes. Sorry, not between games, between episodes. And it'll be a lot less of a time gap between them and the episodes will be more fluent. If you ever play a Telltale game and you feel like the next time on or the, you know, 
anything feels disjointed, it probably is. Some things have to be cut. Some ideas have to be cut. They have to. That's why a lot of the Telltale games, like Game of Thrones, that's another one that just disappeared because it was a uh, HBO property. It's probably the worst Telltale game that exists. I still like playing it because I love the art style and I love the game. But the ending is very lackluster and the choices really, really don't matter in it. And it's also the second longest Telltale game because I think there are six episodes. Minecraft Storm in Season 1 is eight so it's the second longest, and unfortunately in that front, it does not hold up at all when it comes to the choices, but I do still enjoy playing it. But um, they are trying to fix that, and that's what they're doing. They also have The Expanse, which is based off of a Amazon Prime TV show that they are now creating a game for. Uh, which is their first new IP, and they're using the Unity engine now, so things will change. They also have property rights for Tales of Monkey Island, great game, Hector Bag of Bag Badge of Carnage, which I still have to fully play, Puzzle Agent 1 and 2, both great games, Strong Bad's, Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people, uh, Telltale's Texas Hold'em, and their most recent reacquiring of Wallace and Gromit Grand Adventures. These are the games that Telltale has gained the rights to again and have re-released. Now, the games that have not, they do not have the rights to, and unfortunately have not gained the rights back to, include, but are not limited to, the Walking Dead franchise, Minecraft Story Mode, Back to the Future the Game, uh, Jurassic Park the Game, um, a couple other smaller, older titles, um, which I think most of the older ones are there, but th there's a, there's a couple. They made a couple CSI games too a long time ago. Um, but leading us into our discussion for this video primarily being Tales from the Borderlands. 2K gained the rights to Tales from the Borderlands when Telltale went under. They took it and it took a little bit of time, and they re-released it on what it looks like February 16th, 2021. So I'd say it took two years for them to get the rights and re-release it. They re-released it, and I'm I'm 90% sure they raised the price, because I think it was uh, $15 originally. Hold on, let me look. I'm trying to recall. I'm pretty sure it was 15. I think they raised it. I'm not positive. It's hard to tell. I could go uh, way back machine. But um, so yeah, anyway, I want to go look, but they gained the rights. They re-released the game and everyone was uh, very happy as a matter of fact. Uh, and so was I, because that game's great, that game's amazing, and they changed it a tiny bit on how, like, the game itself works, they changed their logo, they changed, um, you know, a lot of things about their personal logo. I'm gonna go see how much the price was, because part of my thing is, the new Telltale uh, new, the new Tales from the Borderlands, sorry, not Telltale, the new Tales from the Borderlands is 40 bucks, um, and I, I am sorry, but that is very expensive for what exists now, and I'm not a huge fan. Uh, that it is that expensive. And sure, there could be more gameplay, which is fine, but the thing is, when you're, you're doing a certain thing, you know, you gotta be careful with what you do. But, either way, Tales from the Borderlands is now available on almost every platform, including Switch, which they released it on, uh, which is great, fantastic. It still includes all five episodes, none of the core gameplay has changed, they just re-release it, and in fact, they have actually put Reese in Borderlands 3. But just so you know, 
They're charging 40 bucks for this new tell this new Tales from the Borderlands game, right? Borderlands 3 is 60. It, it they're charging a lot for a game that originally was not that long. And in Borderlands 3, it did include Reese uh and Vaughn, I believe. I do believe they were involved in some capacity. Okay, yes. So the season pass was $15. Most Telltale games are $15. So they raised the price up by 5 bucks when they re-released the game. Okay, guys. Sorry about this little interjection here. Um, so I kind of didn't realize when I was making this that... The way that Telltale Games worked when they first came out was you would buy the first episode, um, and then you would buy the season pass. Uh, especially on the 360 there, that's what would happen. And then sometimes they'd have bundles with all five games. So I actually don't think that they lowered or they raised the price of Tales from the Borderlands. I think that they just charged five bucks per episode. Um... 5, 10, 15, 20. Actually, it's $5 cheaper. 5 bucks per episode was 25 bucks. They're paying 20 for 5 episodes. I I want to correct that. <laughs> I do not think that they are charging more per episode. Just be aware uh, that if I say that again in this video, please know I was incorrect on that statement. Anyway, enjoy the rest of this. Now, despite that... Um, Tales from the Borderlands is officially canon. They made it a canon before Borderlands 3 came out, um, which is great. The new Tales from the Borderlands does not follow the same characters. It follows a set of brand new characters that we have never seen before. I don't know, um, I, Reese is supposedly in the trailer. I haven't seen him i don't know like i i'll have to rewatch the trailer and see if i can find him in it but he's supposedly in it this game is not made by telltale do not be fooled tales new tales from the borderlands is not made by telltale it is made by gearbox software and published by 2k it is not made by telltale uh, I think there might be a couple of old Telltale employees who were hired to work on the project. And now reading the description, it says, Aside the fates of altruistic scientist Anu, her ambitious streetwise brother Octavio, and the fearsome fraught singing Fran claw and con your way through five thrilling chapters. It does say five chapters. It does not call it episodes. It calls it chapters but if they keep that same format i might actually really like it i don't think they will though i'm not positive something that worries me is pre-order so you pre-order to get the adventure capital pack featuring cosmetics for a new octavian fran which is fine right an in-game fl 4k vault lander collectible i do not know what that is but it also includes 10,000 in-game currency. Why would a game like this need in-game currency? It would not. If you've played Tales from the Borderlands, you don't need in-game currency. We should not be having in-game currency. It's fine if we have a lot of walking around, but we should have some QTEs, and it should be a very stream mainlined game. We should not be getting lost. Telltale did a very good job of directing you in one one area, and it should follow that. It should not be easy to get lost in this game. And I do not know why we would need in-game currency. The Deluxe Edition does not come with anything substantial to New Tales from the Borderlands. It does not have anything substantial. It has the PC version of, well, the version of wherever you buy it, of New Tales from the Borderlands and includes Tales from the Borderlands full game. It includes the original game. So they make you pay 10 extra dollars for the original game. And that's the deluxe edition. I obviously don't need that because I've bought the game on every platform, maybe except Switch at this point. Um, and maybe even GOG. 
because I'm going to be honest with you, I love the game so much, I just wanted to support Telltale half the time. But either way, my point being, the Deluxe Edition, and, and I, I can get pictures for you of this, and I can put stuff up on the screen from the from pages that I find, but the pre-order thing, you know I'm going to pre-order this. I will definitely pre-order it before October 21st, 2022, but so far, I'm not seeing how, of course they just announced it, but I'm not seeing how long it is, and I'm not seeing any additional information. So what is this? A uh, new chest and board come October from Mayhem Time in Your Business, New Narrative Adventure. So you want to hear a story, eh? Say hello to the new Tales from the Borderlands. A standalone choice-based interactive narrative adventure is coming to Xbox Series X, slash S, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam and Epic Games Store on October 21st, 2022. Pre-order new Tales from the Borderlands and get a new vendor capital pack. Earlier today, Gearbox founder Randy Pitch joined her current games kind of opening nine to do the announcement trailer. The Raccoon's Adventure Metro Pops of Promethea, where you control a new Octavia and France. So you control three characters. So instead of two, you're controlling three. So that's interesting. Uh, on the worst day of their lives, help these three level losers as they endeavor to change the world and maybe even save it. Face down a Planetary Invasion, Vicious Vault Monster, and Cold-Hearted Capitalists in a cinematic thrill ride where what happens next is up to you. Meet a molly cast of misfits, assassin bots, and talking guns. I think there's literally a gun that, that has feet uh, in the trailer. And talking guns in the race to the top. It's time to fight back against exploitation and corporate greed. It's time to take mayhem. It's time to make mayhem your business. Okay. New Tales from the Borderlands features three playable characters. We know that. Those three. With nothing left to lose and everything to gain, your claw and con your way through this thrilling journey full of gun-toting goons, otherwise otherworldly beasts, and delicious tacos. Along with your unique perspective, each protagonist has their own gadget to help them out during their exploration and intense situations alike. A new can scan objects using her high-tech glasses, a Tavio can pull up people's social media info and hack certain devices with her wristband and echo deck, and Frank can punch her way through problems or freeze them solid using the built-in accessories of her hover chair. Okay, so one, glasses was, they, they just took, they just took Reese's abilities and split them into two characters. High tech glasses is like his eye. We had that in the f in the first game. Reese has that, and hack devices and wrist mounted echo decks is literally what Reese had in the first game. And then punching or freezing is a brand new ability for the third character. But they literally just took Reese's abilities and were like, "Hey, here, you character, you get half of it, and you character, you get the other half." Kind of seems unnecessary. We'll see how it plays out. The decision you make determine how your story ends in unexpected ways, whether it's Anu's vision of a universe that markets more weapons, Octavia's dreams of fame and fortune, or Franz Frosty plot for revenge or success or failure depends on you. The story takes place within a year after the events of Borderlands 3 with familiar faces and locals that fans will recognize, but you don't need to have played any previous Borderlands games to enjoy this self-contained story. The five part adventure is delivered all at once, so you can play it at your own pace when the game launches on October 21st. So you get in-game 4K Valander's figure, 10,000 in-game currency, I still don't understand why. One skin for each main character, which is fine. Uh, there are two editions of the new Tales from the Borderlands, both of which are available for pre-order now. The standard edition, digital only. Includes the full game, while the, the Deluxe Edition, Digital Plus Physical. So, okay. So you're telling me the Standard Edition does not get a physical release, but the more expensive edition is going to get a physical release that comes with the original Tales from the Borderlands so you can experience a previous narrative adventure in, set in the Borderlands universe. That's really annoying. When you pre-order the new Tales from the Borderlands, you get access to the pre-order bonus. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it.
Okay, well, that's interesting. I'm I'm more interested in the story now. It, it feels like a Telltale game with how they're describing it. It doesn't seem like a Telltale game. And I'm sure they'll have some differences, but it really needs to hark the way of the first game. And I'm not liking the fact that we have three characters. I feel like we're probably going to get a lot of time as all three throughout the game. There's probably going to be some chapters that are mostly focused on each character, maybe. I don't know. I'm I'm a little worried. I am a little worried. Um, But I will still play it. And I, um, nope, it's there. I found it. I do own Tales from the Borderlands on GOG. Not that that matters too much, but it was available on there. And of course, since they are the way they are, they removed it. Um, but I want to go to Amazon and I'm going to search up new Tales from the Borderlands. Okay, so we got Nintendo Switch Physical Deluxe Edition, PlayStation 4 Physical Deluxe Edition. Now, does the PlayStation 4 get you the PlayStation 5 version? It does not seem like it. Nothing on the box. An Xbox Series X. Okay, well, that's what it is. I I do not think that this game's going to be too great, and I'm just going to be honest with you here. I mean, I think the game might be good, but it will definitely be different from our average Telltale game. And I don't know why they're they're forcing people. Because here's the thing. I'm going to be honest with you. All the money from Tales from the Borderlands that they get is kind of free to them. It's kind of like free money. Because yeah, they had investment in the game when it came out. 20 bucks, even 10 bucks for the deluxe edition of something that they don't have to do anything more than add a game that already exists that people absolutely love for them to get extra money. Especially if you want the game physically, you're going to pay that 10 extra bucks even if you already own the dang game, which I, I pretty much own the game on everything already, so I would not need that code. And if I got it physically, uh, it wouldn't help me at all. So, also, I don't even know if Handsome Jack will be in it in any way. It feels like they are trying to distance it from everything else that exists. And I wish I had a better better sight of what that was. I'm just going to see if I can see anything in the trailer one last time. Anything that stands out to me. I'm not playing the audio. I'm just playing the video. So, and the, it doesn't, it looks more like a Borderlands game than it does Tales from the Borderlands. Which I guess is good, it might be good, because it's higher quality, so. Okay, well there's the vault monster. I'm trying to see if I can find Reese anywhere. Literally a gun that has two legs. There's literally some random figurines attacking each other. Oh, there he is. Okay, so he has an office. And I swear it better be played by um the same voice actor. I forgot his name at the moment. I don't know why we're not playing as Reese. I'm so upset about that. But um, he's in there for like five seconds. Less than that even. Found it. But anyway, um... There's your backstory rundown on this entire situation, really. Sorry, you may have heard that. And this entire, how do I say, the entire, kind of like a very quick summary of the entire Telltale history, as well as why I'd be careful with this game, to be honest with you. But that's okay. Um, I look forward to this still. I cannot wait for October. October is going to be a great month for me. I got some movies coming out that I want to watch. I got this game. I got um, another game, which is going to be on Game Pass, so I can play it day one for free. Well, and any more than what I'm being charged, which I do have to renew my subscription next month because it ends. But I am excited, so... 
good month coming up. I'm hoping this game will be good. Take it with a grain of salt. Play Tales from the Borderlands if you haven't. Um, I don't recall if I played it on the channel or not. If I haven't, keep an eye out because I'm probably going to play it soon on the channel uh, before October so that I can share everyone the good game in case that one is not as good. We will find out. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.